What is up guys? We got some tracker panels here and they told me there was alarms. RT2, heat failure, no flame sense with call for heat. So we need to look at RTU2, see what else is here. Com failures, restore. Com failures are pretty typical with an old, honestly, any control system. You're gonna see some com failures most of the time. But RTU2 is the one we need to look at. I am currently up here in the front office area. I need to get over here. I believe that's number two. I marked this map years ago with all of their neuron IDs for all of the units. Since then, there's been a whole lot of construction and a whole lot's changed, but it makes it helpful when you need to mess with the controls. So let's go up and find RTU2 and figure out why we're not heating. <laughs> This is an industrial plant, and I'm about three or four hours after that alarm at 10 o'clock. So if we go to number two, you can see it's not going to be heating when I get up there. Let's go to status, and we can see there's no diagnostic. So whatever happened, that no flame sensor, it didn't fire up. The space warmed up, so it's no longer calling for heat. So I'm not gonna see an actual alarm probably, but we'll get up there and uh, see what we got. We can put it in test mode. All right, here we are. That's gonna be number two over there. It's the furthest one. Like I said, these guys are all new. So the rock roof you see in the four old units, those are AC only. That was all original plant. And then the first edition was those four YCDs over there. And then, I don't know, it's been five years or so, they added on this entire space. So these have changed a lot over the last decade or so, but these aren't that old, so shouldn't be too much terribly wrong with them. I've got cracked heat exchangers everywhere else. Even the YCDs this past year, I found some of those cracked. I think they're going on probably 10 years. These are probably four or five, so I wouldn't expect a heat exchanger. This is probably gonna be a, with the flame sense or no flame sense, it's probably a, an igniter problem would be my guess. But these are negative pressure gas valves, so we'll dig in and check everything we need to. So we got blower and like I said, call's gone, so we're not gonna have a call. So let's just pop some panels off. Belt sounds good. This is an industrial place. There's a whole lot of welding and stuff going on. So you can see the little dirt fingerprint marks. Everything's greasy and nasty. The blowers are caked with grease. The filters are probably dirty. They change the filters. Somebody comes out and changes the filters. Uh, I don't know how frequently, but they're always dirty. They're, it's just, one of the things you gotta deal with at some places like this. So everything looks normal. Like I said, there was no uh, lockout still showing down there. So I didn't expect too much up here. Um, everything's looking normal. It's just, it's waiting for a call at this point. It's kinda tight there. But other than that, everything looks normal. Looks like this. I already changed the gas valve, 17. And other than some dirt, we got a high limit hiding down there. The motor looks a little rough. You can see the windings inside of there. It spins. These are negative pressure gas valves, so the outlet of your gas valve shoots right into the blower here and blows the gas in. There's your igniter. I don't know, they put these holes here because you can see the burner through that hole. You can see the igniter a little bit, but they're hard to see anything. 
there's a little screen on just on the other side of this that can cause intermittent problems igniting if they get real plugged up but I'm gonna will be willing to bet there's something wrong with this igniter so let's uh let's ohm it out before we do anything and we're also gonna check our regulator vent and make sure it's clear so I got it disconnected let's see if I can get this other meter lead in there Oh well, oh well, I'm going to verify, make sure I'm on there real good, but we ain't got no resistance on the igniter, so it's open, and we're not going to light very well without an igniter, so, um, hmm, I do not have one of those igniters on my truck, so just uh, to get us through do know a little bit about this location let's do whatever I was talking about first to make sure our vents clear while I'm thinking about it yeah we got a screen in the bottom of there it all looks clear I don't see anything major so what I can do I know this side got hit by lightning or something. That YCD over there on the far corner is actually turned off. So is one of the old guys over there that it burnt up a transformer and like all of the wiring. I don't, I, it's, it's got a cracked heat exchanger. The thing's 30 years old, but I opened this panel up and it's literally just charred black all through here. So aside from rewiring the whole entire panel, with an unit that old they really need a new one but i'm going to assume that my igniter on that guy over there is still good so we might be able to carefully grab it and swap it out to get them some heat for right now it's an industrial plant so it's not like they're dying for heat but uh, at least let it run for a little while while i'm gone I'm going to get them a new igniter now you want to be careful with these these screws like to strip out, especially with as they age. You won't get these screws out. Sometimes you'll have to pry these off because these screws won't move. And you'll just break the screw off in there is what happens a lot of times. So we're just going to be easy. And just see if we can't give it a turn. Mm, yep, those are pretty tight. I don't know if those guys are gonna come out either. Yeah, they're not wanting to turn. I'm gonna see about maybe just getting a handheld nut driver in there, see if I can't turn them like that. I like to be easy with the drill when you're trying them because you will snap those screws off. These things are a pain in the ass. And then you somehow gotta get another screw in there, so. Worst case scenario, I'll pry back on this and try to get that igniter out of there. And sometimes you just can't get away from the inevitable. So we'll have to, we'll shoot a self tapper or something back in there. Let's be careful. I have to get it out of there first. Let's be careful and pull this igniter out of there so we don't hit it on anything. We can see what it looks like. So we got it out and it's gone so sometimes these will get just a hairline crack and you'll see you'll have a full igniter here and you'll just see a, a hairline crack in it um, this obviously is easy to tell it's bad uh, the no ohm reading said it all so let's go see if I can't get another igniter at least a spare one from over there for now we'll throw it in here and uh, fire this guy off make sure everything lights we'll go through and check our uh everything else i haven't even looked at the blower i'm not terribly concerned about any of that the blower sounds good um let's go get an igniter and see if we can't get it back in there so this guy's gonna be the ticket to the igniter i need that's the one that was all charred up we had some storms go through a couple years back and they haven't been fixed yet um, but they've been sitting off for a while this one lost like a lost a combustion blower the contactors were burnt up 
Um, the blower motor died. Um, I don't remember if there was something else, maybe the combustion blower. There was a, a few different things on this one. So let's get in here, see if we can't get that igniter out and hopefully it's good. I didn't figure my eyes were too good at uh, getting this one out either. So the top screw is spinning. It's stripped out, so I can't get the top screw out. The bottom screw is tight. I haven't broke it yet, but I'm getting ready to because I need this to be loose enough so I'm not fighting it because I'm going to have to be careful. I don't want to break the igniter before I even get it over to the end I'm headed to. Um, so just case in point, be careful. When you're doing these, these things almost never come out. Steerake. That's a little hairline fracture crack there that I was kind of expecting on the other one. So this igniter is no good either. That's what you'll see a lot of times. A lot of times that's how they'll fail. So, back to the drawing board. I'm gonna have to go get an igniter, I guess. Now, before I run and get an, an igniter, I wanna make sure there's no other potential problems here so we're going to just pull the panels off we're going to look at our belt uh filters are going to be dirty but we're going to take a look at them anyways heat exchanger and then we'll put it in test mode and just make sure that motor runs like i said that motor kind of looked those windings just looked a little dark in there when i first opened it up but uh i think it's going to be okay but we'll see i want to make sure i see it run before i leave worst thing i can do is come back with an igniter waste the time to go get it put an igniter in turn it on and then the combustion motor doesn't work and we're back to square one then i gotta go get a combustion motor so i want to have all issues found before i make a trip to go get something mm, belt might be a little loose but it's okay like i said it sounded all right looks like it's in pretty good shape a little play out of that idler pulley you can see this is the, it's, it's grease, greasy dust. We deal with this all the time around here. You can see it coming through the coil. I mean, it's just, and it's greasy stuff. It makes airflow a constant issue. I mean, the blowers get caked up. The filters get changed, but they're constant. And hell, that's on the end, it's not too bad. But it's a constant issue too. I mean, everything's just covered in it. The return, uh, the return's got a grate on it below, and uh, they they get plugged up. We got to clean those constantly, or have their maintenance guys clean them constantly. And drains are a constant issue. Everything's an issue at an industrial site like this. They're just so dirty. It's uh, not good conditions for these things to run. Easiest way to get to the heat exchangers on these. I usually just take all my screws out, leave the top row in, and then this whole panel will pull out and we can kind of crawl up inside and look at that heat exchanger. Condenser doesn't look too bad. Now, got all our screws out. Top screw's still in. I'm gonna be careful because there is a little insulation in here and it will get stuck to the panel and you don't want to go pulling on everything and just tear that insulation up so I'm just going to pull it off that seam and then we'll be able to pull the whole panel out like this and get up inside there and take a look This has blown a blower wheel up before. This is the duct that was actually hit. And that's not helping us any. We got a big old gap. Check that out. That duct's hanging in the air. Um, forklift drivers, man. Forklift drivers like to hit everything. And they smacked this a few times. So, 
we definitely gonna have to address that. Let's look at the heat exchanger. That's what I came in here for. Hadn't run a whole lot. You can see the dust on it. Seems look good. I don't see anything notice. We'll go over the rest of it, but that thing's all right. You see, there's the, the main barrel that blower, combustion blower feeds into. But I'm a little more concerned about that duct now. Problem is, is you can't get to it. They, uh, it goes all the way down and it's got diffusers off each side. It's just a drop, so blowing straight down shouldn't affect us too much except it could blow on someone but that duck's going to be kind of blocking it it's just going to be going everywhere we'll note it to them and see what they want to do uh, they've clearly hit it with the forklift if you look down below i walked through on my way up to it and you could see where they've i don't know probably hit it 18 times but it looks like it's connected from down below i wouldn't have noticed that unless i pulled that panel off so let's get all of our screws back in here make sure you don't forget this line because this is return, this is supply. So you gotta have that sealed off. And because of things like that duct and everything else, if you just shove a temp probe in here, you're not getting an accurate reading from right there. Right on the end of that barrel, you have to get a, you'd have to get a probe down inside there or go on the other end and get it on the supply duct. This is, not the best place to take same way on the return to get temperatures now we'll put this guy in test mode but if you can get your screw just loose it'll come off of there like that so now i don't have to drill the top screw because it's not moving either it's just got those little hooks on it and then that holds your igniter in so i'll be able to hook the top one and then i'll drill a hole somewhere here on the bottom hopefully back in the same place with that screw head still in there and then be able to get a screw and put the igniter in first and then hook that bottom side last that's going to be the plan at least let's make sure this combustion motor runs there's our test terminals glare i don't know how well y'all can see but we're just going to short them out and wait for that RTRM is going to start flashing. And the sun is not helping me. That flash is not lockout because we just turned it on. That flash means it's in test mode. So it's going to go the blower you heard. The second tap was the economizer. Third should be cooling. Stage one. Cooling stage two. And then uh, heating low fire. Ooh. I told you that looked a little burnt up in there. I can't believe that didn't blow a breaker or something. Yeah, she's locked up. All right, so good thing we checked. Now I need a combustion motor. Just for S and G, we'll check our capacitor, but that motor's dead. I, you heard it. It's locked up. Four microfarads. I think those are fives, but four should be enough to start that motor. So let's see. We got to get with the customer, uh, see about the motor and igniter. Igniter shouldn't be hard to find. And I can even get an aftermarket if I need to but the motor is going to be tricky so uh, that comes with the entire assembly i believe not just the motor it'll come with this the wheel inside and you'll have to unbolt it from here pull that whole thing off and put a new one in so i'll get with the customer if i come back to make repairs we'll see what they want to do um i'll get it on video if not leave a trade bear and you found it see y'all next time